The story takes place in the world of cultivation, where the main character, Sean, from birth has no spiritual roots, so he is unable to cultivate. But even so, he still manages to remain a fairly strong and confident young man. Right now, people from a parallel sect are gathering in a huge crowd to devise a detailed plan to eliminate him. Because the guy had crossed them by some action of his own, and added some difficulty to their vision of the business. These people were as sure as they could be that they would succeed. That's why all of them are geniuses of the underworld, and there are huge rewards for their heads. That's why, having used all their knowledge and skills, they won't let Sean laugh at them anymore. But now the bulk of people, there is a question of how to do it, because Sean, despite the fact that he is one, is really very cool and strong. But the organizers of the event assured all participants that this matter cannot worry, because if they are competent to unite, they will be able to defeat him without problems. As it turned out later, one of those sitting here had already met Sean, and even fought him. It was like this. Last month the kid came alone to the secret base of one of the sects, and to protect himself all the people went outside, there were at least a hundred of them. Before they started attacking, Sean swung his hand and a mysterious weapon appeared, followed by a powerful flash and all those who came to the defense of the base fell as one. Also among those people, there was one deeply respected boss of their gang, who like everyone else lost his life on the spot. After such a heavy story, everyone began to have quite a few questions, the desire to take part in it noticeably decreased and in general it was difficult to believe that the power of such a level even exists in this world, because, put one hundred people after just one flash, sounds like a fantasy. Then the girls who came to this meeting also confirmed that this Sean is not so simple, because just five days ago, a gang of seven beauties just robbed people, and the guy like an animal rushed at them, tied them up with his tentacles and began to strangle badly. In the end, of the seven beauties, only three remained. Suddenly a man burst into the meeting of the underworld, and because his face could not be seen, the bandits drew their swords and quietly inquired who had the audacity to enter without knocking first. The stranger answered that from the street he had heard talk of Sean, so he had come to the right place. He introduced himself as an elite bandit who also hated him and was willing to help. After these words, the guys immediately exhaled, because they were already scared out of their wits, thinking that the real Sean had burst into the meeting. In that case, he was let in and given a separate seat. When the guy realized that basically all the bandits are already gathered, he no longer saw any point in hiding, in a few seconds, returned to his usual state, a strong, confident young man, and openly declared to the entire room that all those who are in the room, it is beyond it will not go anywhere. Based on this situation, the bandits decided not to lose a minute, and immediately attacked Sean, because they had no other choice, as they say all or nothing. This outcome of events, the guy even a little happy, because in principle was not opposed to actually punish the next pack of gangsters. This time it was decided to do the same as last time, Sean in his mind read a small spell, after which a bright flash suddenly appeared, and there was a huge explosion as a result of which half of the building was destroyed, and the vast majority of opponents could no longer function. In the end, those who still managed to stay conscious began to beg the guy to stay away from them, because they were extremely scared, and realized that they had almost no chance of pardon. Also some of them began to allow theories that Sean is not really a follower of the righteous path, but rather the devil's way, using demonic practices, roughly speaking the same as the god of evil. Because no one being on the light path can wield such terrible power. Then the local police came into the room, rounded up all the survivors, and closed the issue on most of the perpetrators in just one go. They also wondered quite a bit about Sean's techniques and were in solidarity with the bandits that they were most likely techniques of the unrighteous path. But nevertheless, it didn't bother them in any way at all for now because the job was done successfully. The guy helped them, and didn't hurt anyone unnecessarily, so it was more than okay. At the same time Sean already with a bump on his head, ate grapes and moved on with his business. By the way, the name of this nice lady is Milana, she is Sean's sister, 
and the guy loves her so much that everything she gives him from her hands automatically becomes very tasty, even poison. She asked her brother what he was going to do next, because he had already dealt with all the bandits in the area. According to the guy, all these cleanup of bandits were just small obstacles on the way to the destination, which Sean saw, by the way, to go there was not far away. The boy will have to get some useful information about the so-called omniscient. But so far he has not been in a hurry to reveal all the cards, and does not say what will happen if everything goes according to plan. The most important thing for him now is that Milana puts the grapes in his mouth on time. Meanwhile along the way, the guy sensed that an ambush awaits them ahead, so he made a tactical decision to knowingly stop the bull, and smoothly join the guys who are sitting in the bushes and waiting for a good victim to carry out the robbery. Apparently this time they had invited some newcomer with them, because he could not shut up and behave normally. The guys even had to go to extreme measures to make him finally realize that he was on a very important task, some still managed to hear them, and take a quick detour to another road. In general, these guys are not professional robbers, they were forced to take this step because they had not eaten anything for several days because of a bad harvest. Also the guys realized that if they robbed some ordinary people, it would be the same as to destroy them, so it is necessary to wait for the luxury carriage. After all, if they robbed the rich people, the guys could write a promissory note, and in the future pay them back with interest, when the crops were better. Initially the guys just stopped talking, and then Boris abruptly grabbed his weapon and put it right to Sean's neck, arguing that he didn't know who he was and demanded an explanation. Unfortunately Boris did not believe in this legend, because all the gang members who are here are from the same village, but he had never seen Sean before. That he was a third cousin of the second grandfather's neighbor on the maternal line. Also, Sean added that he joined the gang on the way, so he didn't have a chance to greet Boris in time to inform him of his enrollment. After this story, he was thinking pretty hard. And after only a few minutes, he was hugging Sean like he was his own brother. Because usually, in small villages like this, everyone is a distant relative to each other. When suddenly, the boys spotted a caravan on the horizon. This was definitely their chance, so they had to get ready. The main objective so far is to wait for them to get as close as possible and take them in a ring. But apparently Sean had other ideas, because suddenly, he came out from behind the bushes and announced that he would delay the caravan to buy more time to prepare. When the escort saw the obstacle in front of them, they immediately stopped and said that they were carrying goods belonging to the Wuji sect, and if the guy understood everything correctly, he had to get out of the way, and if he refused, the armed guards would be forced to remove him by force. Because Sean was very familiar with the sect, deep down he didn't want to interfere in any way, but unfortunately in this situation, he had no choice but to proceed with the plan he had just devised. In general, despite all the warnings of the guide, the guy said he didn't care who they were, and said that it was his private road, so if the caravan wanted to come further, he had to pay a fee for using someone else's road for his personal enrichment. Because of this disrespectful reaction, the guy asked them to open their eyes wide, because he was not really alone, and gradually began to reveal the positions of his guys, pointing his finger at each of them. Of course such behavior of our hero allies did not like it at all, because, in fact, right now he gave up all of his own and put the caravan on notice that it was necessary to prepare for battle because there were too many potential opponents. To be honest, it's hard to say what goals our hero was pursuing at the moment, but judging by his facial expression, we can understand that in his head he thinks he's doing everything right. Since all the positions were known to the enemy, Boris didn't hesitate long enough to order an attack, because there were no other options. No matter how powerful the guards were, the guys couldn't afford to lose, because if they did, their families would go hungry and eventually lose their lives, which was unacceptable. Sean in turn, during such a fierce battle, decided not to bother himself, and just sit on the sidelines. The first thing that caught his eye is that, no matter how you look at it, these guys from the village do not look like brigands, because instead of normal weapons, they have in their hands only scythes and hoes, the most ordinary farmers, who got far from the most favorable situation. 
The only one of them stands out the most is Boris, because in addition to the fact that he fights pretty well, but also apparently has some magic. To save his life this time, Sean specially threw the remains of a banana under his feet, so that the guy slipped, and thus did not allow the opponent to hit. Of course, Boris could not even think that it was done for a good purpose, so he even managed to get angry, even though he had just lost his life. Also, in the middle of the fight, Sean strongly recommended to everyone not to make Boris angry, because he might get angry and knock out everyone's teeth. After a few more minutes of fighting, the guy realized that it was time to finish, so he started a signal fire to distract the guy's attention and inform them that this was the territory of the Tian Nao sect and its members would soon come here to restore order and eliminate all unwanted guests. Sean also added that those who surrendered voluntarily would receive emergency medical care and free food for the first time. After these words Boris realized that from the very beginning the guy had been deceiving them professionally, and he wanted to take revenge on him, but now the goods were clearly more important. The caravan, in turn, also decided to retreat, because they realized that if they continued this senseless battle, they would all end up in the end. In the end, we can say that the mission was accomplished more than successfully, although through deception, but the guy was able to provide the farmer's families with everything they needed. When everything was over, Sean personally approached Boris to talk a little, but in response to this desire, our hero had to dodge the blows, because as it turned out later, Boris basically hates all sex, because as a rule, they always talk a lot, and the deeds never correspond to their words. He is also insanely annoyed by the fact that the sect in which Sean is a member is always talking about its brotherhood and justice, but in fact takes away farmers' crops and makes them grow spiritual medicinal plants for free of charge. In that case, Sean suggested that he should just move to their lands. If the guy knew the sect leader well enough, and if Boris and his whole village wanted to join, they would be well taken care of and given the opportunity to grow anything they wanted. In the end, our hero got tired of dodging the constant blows, so he suddenly drew his sword and instantly broke his opponent's weapon. To be honest, Boris was a bit shocked, because he hadn't even noticed when Sean had managed to pick up his sword. But nevertheless, like a polite warrior, the guy apologized for the damage, and argued that at the moment he had just panicked that he wouldn't be able to dodge again. Then one of the robbery participants informed Boris that they had almost carried away all the goods, so they could slowly pack up and go home. In that case, the commander asked them to leave first, and said that if Sean started to make a move, he would cover for them. As soon as the guys slowly began to retreat, a huge net fell on them, after which the whole team, except for Boris, was completely immobilized and no longer had the ability to resist in any way. At that moment, Sean was insanely happy, because he finally got reinforcements. The guys from the Tianao sect attacked from the air, and had previously informed them that no one would escape from here. As Boris was left all alone, he was not beaten at once, but was given the opportunity to surrender voluntarily, to which he responded with aggression and was going to destroy all of them at once with one stick. To scare Boris a little, the cult members drew their swords and began to move swiftly toward him. After that, they just ran past and started hugging Sean for doing such a good job. Our hero was pleased, but sometimes the comrades were already squeezing too hard and he had no room to breathe. At the same time Boris snapped out of his seat, and instead of trying to save his own skin, he immediately ran to save his comrades, a very decent act on his part, but at the same time maximally foolish, because the chances of getting away at least one and so were the opinion of one percent. Sean could see what Boris was doing, so he decided not to flirt with his friends for too long and went straight to the net to once again propose a peace treaty, to give the families what they needed and to free them from the need for robbery. Well, this time Boris's nerves were finally frayed, and he just had to show his real self to prove his unwillingness to join the sect. Namely to activate the spiritual fire technique. To be honest, Sean wasn't really surprised that this guy was a practitioner because he had seen him practicing magic on the battlefield. Now it was clear to everyone why Sean wanted so much to join him in the sect. Due to the fact that Boris constantly attacked with powerful blows, 
our hero constantly had to retreat, because even to block such a thing is too dangerous, because you can be badly injured. During the fight, the situation was so dire, Sean had no place to run, so he had to go to extreme measures, and ask for help from Milana, because she has the most powerful magical abilities, and with a great desire, can cool down this fiery farmer. The girl used a spiritual technique called Wind King and threw Boris a great distance away, causing him to fly into a wooden block at a great speed and punch a hole in it. Fortunately, it wasn't that hard to defeat the practitioner from the village. The girl in principle is always happy to help, but if once again, Sean tries to distance himself from her, or goes on some tasks alone, then as a punishment, she will just tie him up and will no longer help, because she objectively begins to get tired that the guy remembers about her only in the most critical situations. Now it was time to see how Boris was feeling, and to be frank, his whole body hurt without exaggeration. When Nalana looked into the drawer, she discovered that there was something terrible there, but the guy deliberately asked her not to scream, because she still had to figure out what it could mean. But who would have thought that a parallel sect could really do something like this, to purposely destroy people, and then take them to another city to the market, and try to make money on it, even hard to say what could be more horrible, because in the boxes are both adults and children. That same evening, when it was all over and no one else wanted to fight, the guy brought the farmers to the plot he had personally prepared for them, gave them free land, food, and told them that if they wanted to, they could plant the whole plot and move their families here. Sean would be just madly happy if the guys decided to stay here and never do robbery again, because all the conditions for living are there, food in almost unlimited amounts, plus the opportunity to grow their own. Of course in that case no one was going to give up, and the guys finally realized what they were trying to run away from. He had one unique offer for Boris, and that was to officially join the sect as a warrior, but apparently he wasn't even remotely interested, because he had long since run off to dig in the ground, and Sean was talking to himself. Well, either way, the most important thing is that there are no more robberies. These people were so happy because the last year had been a bad harvest, and many sects had conspired with the landowners to seize almost all the food from the peasants. The poor people had almost nothing left but to sell their own children in order to survive. Also many peasants decided to start robbery, taking the last bread from the same poor people. Such riots have been going on for a long time all over the divine continent, and there are almost no peaceful places like the territory of Sean's sect. Therefore, the guy could in no way condemn Boris for hating the sex so much. So it is necessary to help the needy to the best of your ability. For the sect in any case these abandoned lands are of no value, but for the farmers it is a unique opportunity to live a normal life, and never again think about where to get food for the next day. And if we talk about how to make Boris a subordinate, there is no hurry in this plan, because sooner or later, with such potential, he will get tired of doing only land, and eventually he will show his desire to join the sect as a warrior. As it was already starting to get dark, the guy, despite his just fine mood, realized that it would be time to go back towards home. At the same time in his head he reasoned that ten years ago, he could not even imagine that there would be such events. In the past, the demon alliance began to gain strength, and demonic practitioners rampaged across the continent. Then the twelve sects of the right path joined forces and rose up against evil. No one could have imagined that the battle would be so fierce, and the alliance of the right path would pay too great a price. Just countless correct practitioners lost their lives, among whom were even the parents of our hero, as well as the entire main core of his sect. And so at the end of the war came the very moment when the sect Tiandao fell to one, losing its influence and the remaining disciples scattered wherever they went. And because there was no one else, he had to inherit the position of cult leader. And that's how these last ten years came to be, keeping the sect afloat was a lot harder than you'd think at the time. Luckily there are these guys left with Sean, who just can't get enough of him, and at the slightest separation of even a few hours, run towards him like it's the first time. But somehow this time they were pretty weirded out, and it felt like instead of hugging, they were running to beat the guy up as soon as possible. Basically it happened, 
at the first opportunity, one of the guys struck a powerful fist right in the face of our hero, after which Sean literally flew away for several meters and even approximately did not understand what he deserved, such a rude attitude to himself, instead of a normal, human greeting. He was so upset that tears even started to come to his eyes. But as it turned out later it was really deserved, because Sean left the house without warning anyone, and left his two brothers and sister alone, without any support, to cope with small children who come for food and cry loudly. In fact, the guys wouldn't have minded giving them food, but because the harvest was terrible, the food supply was low. After hearing the story, Sean was just madly upset, because no matter how much food they got in the end, they have no right to take it all for themselves, but at least some of it must be given away. When Milana realized that a serious fight was about to break out, she immediately took Sean aside and told him not to start it, because if these guys lost their lives, all their work would fall on his shoulders. Then the sister told the story a little differently, insinuating that they did try to deliver the food, but Auntie Tatiana wouldn't take it, because she knew very well that the children themselves were malnourished. She was furious with Sean and wanted to talk to him personally. So now Auntie will not accept anything on principle until she talks to the guy and is 100% sure that there really is enough food for everyone. She also added that next time if the guys don't have anything to come back to, she will gladly host them at her house. Thank God they have no problems with food so far, even though the family is not a small one. Against this background, the guys concluded that their many years of labor had not been in vain and now Auntie was really, really able to get back on her feet. Anyway, in order to find out more about the situation, Sean will have to come to the house. As long as the matter was completely settled, the guys reminded him to remember to keep his promise to sweep the yard for the next month. When Sean was alone with himself, he was finally able to feel some real relaxation after such a long journey. Milana took the opportunity to ask him why, with his swordsmanship skills, Instead of easily repelling Boris's attack, he waited for her to come to his aid. In this case, it was obvious that he was deliberately delaying until the last moment to see what skills his opponent possessed. And the boy always feels very safe with Milana by his side. She's certainly pleased to hear such warm words, but it would be better if he wasn't so careless and behaved with dignity, as befits the real head of such a large sect. Then the two of them started talking again about those merchants who were using the name of a rather famous sexta to do terrible evil. Milana was worried that it might affect their good name in a very negative way, so it would be good to tell them what was going on behind their backs. To begin with, Sean asked her not to worry so much about it, because in the first place, these traders pretended to be people from the Uzi sect, in order to come through foreign territories without any problems on the way, but that time they were just unlucky, because they fell on hungry farmers. In any case, after the end of the war and up until now, Uji remains the main leader among the sects of the righteous path, and there is a good chance that in fact quite a large number of various bandits use their name, and it is simply impossible to trace them all, no matter how hard they try. On the one hand Nalana agreed with this opinion, but deep down she felt that it was not so simple. In any case, at the moment, Sean did not want to think about all sorts of silly things, and it would be nice just to be alone with the girl, and at least a little bit to relax his head from all thoughts. As soon as the guy said this, he immediately noticed that Milana blushed very sharply. In this case, in order not to come to an awkward silence, Sean decided to make a joke, and thus dilute the tense situation. But since the joke turned out not quite successful, the girl decided to take revenge and pinch the guy hard. Meanwhile, in the middle of the night, the very guys who had tried to transport the bodies of the men through Sean's territory stopped for a long rest, pitched their tents, got food, and smoothly began a full rest. Sitting in the tent, the elders discussed among themselves how to report to the chief for such an incident. The first option was not to explain at all and just walk away, because considering how dark this work is, no sect would want to make a fuss about it, and to put a search warrant out for people who failed to do this task it would severely damage their reputation and could be said to put a cross on them. As a result, 
it was decided to just wait for a while and then come back with a suitable excuse, because this was just the first puncture from this gang, and it would be rather stupid of the sect to immediately turn negative against such valuable employees. After all, not everyone would go for such a thing. When everything was decided, the guys went outside to have a little snack, but what they saw next was simply incomprehensible. The entire group of elite subordinates was completely destroyed, and the most interesting thing is that this professional decided to even destroy the horses, so that no one could escape. Also among all these bodies sat two of the very culprits of the celebration, who were already waiting, to put it mildly, when the guys would go outside, to talk to them a little, and have a delicious dinner, because for such a long period of waiting, they had time to get hungry, and on an empty stomach do not like to do business. Also, besides the desire for a good meal, the men were still very interested in what excuse the guys had come up with for them. The next morning, Sean woke up not in the best mood, because he once again had that terrible dream, when he was a little boy, was in the epicenter of the battle, right in the middle of a pile of bodies lying on the floor and allowed the theory that he was already in hell. And as a rule always at the end of this terrible dream, he always meets his parents, to whom they try to push, but at the very last moment always wakes up and cannot bring the matter to an end. How the guy is still tired of it, madly wants all this horror to end. As a rule, our hero has such dreams only on days when he is worried about something and cannot control it. It's been so many days since that incident, and he hasn't forgotten it. Apparently, this is an extremely severe mental trauma that needs to be worked through. In the morning, one of the sisters knocked on the guy's door and told him that for quite some time two guests came to the house and introduced themselves as disciples of the Wuji sect. In this case, Sean asked for a couple more minutes, and in his head he realized that it was definitely not good, because such people never come just like that. As it turned out later, it was the same two guys who had destroyed the entire mercenary squad. Most likely, with the help of certain manipulations, they extracted information from those two guys who were left in the tent, and immediately moved to the specified address to understand how to proceed further. So far, the guys have behaved as culturally as possible, and constantly apologize for coming so early and without an invitation. Over time, they have become uncomfortable in front of the guys for having to stand on their feet while two grown men sit on chairs. To be honest, these guests caused quite different emotions in everyone, for example, the guys were getting a headache because the old man had not closed his mouth since the moment he stepped over the threshold. It seemed as if his teacher was forbidding him to speak. This time the guys went down to the guests to inform them that a colleague had already gone to warn the head about their arrival. When they heard this information the guys were very happy and said that they would wait for sure, as they were guests and came quite suddenly, even for themselves. As soon as Sham came to the guest area, he immediately apologized for the long wait, and said that their sect had not received such important guests for a long time, so he was very happy to meet them, and offered to hug as a sign of their strong friendship. In this case, the guys immediately rose and greeted the guy in return. On the way the youngest student named Lucas accidentally tripped and dropped his cup with water. But it's not a problem. When Alana is around, with the help of her magic, she can always save the situation, namely catch the liquid right in the air, and put it back into any container. Based on what they had just seen, they concluded that Milana was really good and it would be nice to get to know her better. When all the arrangements were done, Sean took the liberty of asking their names so that he would know how to address them properly. At least we already know that the younger one's name is Lucas, and the older one is Tyler. They are both third-generation disciples of the Wuji sect. After the introductions, Sean invited them to sit down at the table, because right now the assistant would bring tea prepared especially for the guests. Sean said that being the head of the Tianao sect, he had to greet the head of the sect in advance, but there are too many problems in this territory which makes it impossible to get out, at least for an extra day, so Sean hoped that no one would be offended by it. Of course the guys replied that everything was fine, because in fact their teacher had wanted to visit Sean in person for a long time, but unfortunately he couldn't do it because of a lot of things to do. I wonder what they are so seriously busy with, 
because since they haven't heard a word from them in ten years, though they sang so beautifully that they will definitely take care of the neighboring sect, the descendants of heroes. This time they obviously didn't come just to chat, because one of them is just grinning like a wolf in the skin. And the other one looks kind and friendly, but he's actually a slippery one. Anyway, let's see what happens next and not jump to conclusions. During the dialogue, the guys decided to tell me that they had heard from their teacher about the previous head of the Tandao sect and his wife. Every time this topic comes up, he is overcome with emotion and cannot hold back his tears, because according to him, it was only through the noble sacrifice of the boy's parents that the sects of the righteous path were able to prevail. Therefore, the teacher repeatedly reiterated that they should never forget the feat they had accomplished. Of course, everything they say is true, but such a long introduction makes our hero vomit, and he wants to get down to business as soon as possible. Anyway, this time the boys have come at the teacher's behest, because he wants to take one of the Tianao sect as his personal disciple. The training period would be ten years, and then the person would return back to his native sect with all the knowledge he had gained. After analyzing, the guys liked Milana the most, because this girl's talent was extremely high, and she could definitely be the perfect candidate. The guys also added that Sean might not thank them, because after all, they are not strangers to each other, and they are always happy to help. When everyone realized the main purpose of their visit, they were as angry as possible, because to come here after ten years and demand the best student is an incredible impudence. Realizing all the risks, Milana was almost 100% sure that Sean would definitely refuse them, but she was still very nervous. In parallel with the guy thinking about this proposal, the guys reminded him that nowadays their sect is undoubtedly the head of all the righteous sects. There are usually a lot of people who want to join them, but only a few get the opportunity. In order not to upset the guys, Sean said that it was really an incredible offer, and if he wasn't the head of the sect himself, he would gladly go to the training. But unfortunately the guy has to disappoint them, because earlier he had already promised an aunt that Milana would study with her in the future, so he had to reject the offer. To be honest, the guys were surprised, because they had no idea that Sean had ties to the Huayu sect. In response, the guy revealed that he's been texting Victoria a lot. Although the Huayu sect is somewhat inferior to Ouiji, this place will definitely be many times better than where Milana is right now, plus they only have girls, so there's just no better option. In fact, everything Sean said was a complete lie, he just had to use the name of a prominent sect to scare these guys into not even thinking about insisting. Sean almost immediately realized that this way these guys were going to take Milana prisoner, under the pretext that they just want to take her for training. To be frank, they planned it all pretty well, but as they say, they attacked the wrong guy, so simply our hero is not fooled. After these words Milana was very happy, and was simply delighted with the ease with which Sean solved the problem. In this case, since the head had already decided everything, she just had to obey him and apologize for the refusal. Then without thinking long, the guys decided to go straight to the next case. Before leaving on a trip the teacher of these guys told them to take with them one very unique thing, and as soon as there is an opportunity, immediately show it to Sean, it is a treasure of the sect Wuji. Golden pill made personally by the teacher, which is given only to students. The peculiarity of this pill lies not only in the fact that it contains many precious herbs, but also in the fact that the energy of heaven and earth, as well as a part of the spiritual power of their teacher, has been infused into it. So it is necessary to take into account that not every sect can offer such conditions. At a point the guys even started to get jealous because they started to feel the concentration of spiritual power in the air increased. This was clearly not an easy pill to take. From the side Milana noticed that the two of them were about to drool. Did they really want to get her that badly? Sean had rather mixed emotions at this moment, because he didn't realize yet how much this thing was important for practitioners, and how it simplified the whole process. Looking at the girl, the guy realized that even she could hardly resist temptation, but was it true that everything was really so rosy? To be honest, in such a situation it becomes more and more difficult to refuse, but our hero has no other choice 
so he is forced to accept the theory that such items have the right to use only the best students, and it is not a fact that Milana can be entrusted with something so expensive. Lucas then added that most practitioners once they reach the last stage of chi hardening, they can no longer appear any further, but just by taking this golden pill, they easily cross that threshold and are able to move on. At least in this respect he is telling the truth, because the pill emanating from this energy speaks for itself. The higher a person's level of cultivation, the more positive effects this pill will have. At one point, Lucas started to bring it so close that Milana couldn't stand it and asked him to remove it. Then Sean grabbed his hand and reminded him that they had already refused, so it was very rude of the guests to try to change his mind. Then Lucas even started to threaten a little, and asked if Sean was afraid that he would offend their teacher by refusing such a generous offer. Of course, our hero does not want such a gesture of goodwill from his uncle to be in vain, because at the present time the sect is in a strong decline, so he would be happy to absolutely any help. But that doesn't mean that Sean has to accept everything he gets from outsiders. He also reminded that he hated it when someone tried to force him to change his mind, and he couldn't let someone force his students to do something they didn't want to do. Well, Lucas was really surprised by such determination, but in his opinion, it didn't mean that the head could refuse him. When suddenly, under the influence of the pill, Milana lost control of her body, and involuntarily began to attack Lucas. Of course the guy asked her to stop, but unfortunately at that moment it was already useful. After the attack was over, the girl was completely without strength, almost fell to the floor. Sean realized that there was something wrong with the golden pill, because it had caused the usually calm Milana to suddenly lose control of herself. Realizing the background of the attack, Tyler began to show his displeasure, saying that in return for their kindness, the girl had responded with such impudence. Lucas went on to remind them that the teacher had sent them to help form the alliance of the two sects, and they were tired of showing their good intentions, but since the head didn't accept them, they weren't going to force him, and if anything, they would do everything themselves without any approval. Frankly it's just awful, because these guys don't even try to hide their bloodlust anymore, but as it is, there's no way Sean can give in. Then another sister abruptly burst into the guest room and informs the chief that two more guests from the Hawaii sect have come to them. Sean apologized to Lucas for his student getting too cranky and accidentally hitting him, hopefully offending no one and parting ways peacefully. Sean apologized to Lucas for making his student too cranky and accidentally hurting her, hopefully no one would be offended, and we part on a peaceful note. The boys also said that it was time for them to go home, thank them for their hospitality and wanted to leave because their teacher told them to come back as soon as the conversation was over, so they couldn't afford to wait too long. In his heart, Sean also wanted them to leave as soon as possible, but unfortunately he couldn't say it out loud, so as not to spoil the already strained relationship. By the way, such a hurry directly indicates that for some reason, they are too much avoiding the clan Hyutsi. I wonder what their relationship with each other. In the end, Without further ado, the guys went straight to the exit and promised that it wouldn't be their last meeting. Well, this conversation was indeed dangerous, but for now, Sean was just madly happy that he'd finally managed to get these two walking problems out of the way. Then one of the boys noticed that the guests had forgotten to take the gold pill with them when they left in a great hurry, though considering who they were, they could have done it on purpose to use it to lure people to their side. Then the boy carefully approached it and put it in his pocket. Because there's definitely something wrong with this thing, and you need to study it as intelligently as possible to make sure it doesn't bring grief to this house. When she had a moment to herself, Milana asked the boy, Is it true that he promised the Huayu sect that he would give it to them? Is it really that much of a nuisance here? In response, Sean said that it would definitely happen at some point, but definitely not until the girl reaches the final chi-tempering stage. This response caused a storm of negative emotions among the brothers, as they couldn't understand how they could give away such a talented sister to someone else. Before answering that kind of question, Sean decided to remind them that he is the head and no one has the right to go against his word, and secondly do the guys really want Milana to ruin her talent, 
because being in this place, she will never be able to advance beyond the maximum chi tempering. In any case, the guy has long ago decided everything for himself, so the guys cannot show their sullen faces. It will not change anything at all, no matter how hard they try. Such a decision very upset Milana, because after so much time, Sean still could not understand what she really feels for him. As soon as the previous guests left the house, the assistant immediately invited the next. They were two beautiful ladies, representatives of the female sect, and for a moment, they even wondered that the guests of Sean were these guys. But since it was not the main purpose of the visit, the girls quickly let go of this thought. After the Wuji sect had completely left the territory, Tyler asked his comrade when he would learn to solve all issues peacefully and stop turning on his lousy temper. That kind of behavior always caused too much trouble and pushed people away. The plan was for Tyler to play the bad guy so that Lucas could play along and play the good guy, but he ended up burning all bridges to further negotiations. There's some truth to those words, but Lucas held back until the end, and he was able to find out that the Tiandao sect wasn't so simple as it might seem at first glance. Because normally, a normal practitioner would salivate and be greedy at the sight of a gold pill, but Sean didn't even raise an eyebrow at the object. This can only mean two things, either he has a very good stamina, or he really doesn't care. But if you look at the situation from the other side, you should not forget that he is the head of a whole sect, and the son of a very powerful man, so it is not surprising that the guy is so strong. The main problem of Lucas is that when he sees a worthy opponent, he starts to go crazy, and the man ceases to control himself. He is eager to find out what this potential rival is and how roughly he will allow him to behave. In any case, it's time to get away from this topic and get to work, namely to get special ingredients, which is likely to be in this village. When the evening came, Sean decided to go to a secluded place to get to know the pill and to think about it. In his heart he realized that, as much as he didn't want to, if he sent Milano away from here, the Wuji sect wouldn't be able to take her hostage. However, if you think about it like that, then leave all the others for a long time at his place is also not worth it, because firstly, against the background of recent events, they are also in danger, and secondly, to make them real warriors, you need really good training, which the guy is simply not able to give. When he wanted to go outside to get some fresh air, he found that all this time the kids were standing right under the door and had brought a small lunch box, along with compote, because they were worried that Sean was not eating anything, because it could have a detrimental effect on his health. They reminded him that it would be a good idea for him to visit his Aunt Tatiana and communicate with her a little more about her refusal to take food, and in general to establish relations between the two of them. They also reminded him that it would be good to visit Aunt Tatiana and communicate with her a lot about the fact that she categorically refuses to take food, and in general to establish relations with each other. In the meantime, Milana had almost completely joined the female sect. All that was left was to get to her destination and take the new oath. On the way, the younger girls started asking her about the two guys from the parallel sect, because she wondered what the purpose of their visit was. Victoria to put it mildly, didn't like the fact that Paulina was sticking her nose into the affairs of someone else's sect, so she constantly made remarks about it. Finally, at the end of the conversation, the girl said that she heard those guys talking about some children, and after that she felt disgusted. For some reason this information seemed very important for Milana, against which background she just could not resist. Without warning anyone, she simply went off course and flew on her own affairs, even though it is against all the norms of any sect. Meanwhile, the village was in full horror. Everything was burning and there was a whole bunch of badly wounded and destroyed people. As soon as our hero became aware of the tragedy, he immediately went there with his team to stop those who did it and to help those in need. Unfortunately, among all these seriously wounded, there was also Tatiana. When Sean found her, he immediately ran to her to understand what condition she was in, and how he could help her. But even though the woman was bleeding a lot, the guy promised her that she should worry, because he would definitely cure her. Sean then gave orders to urgently search for the person who had done it, but with one condition, under no circumstances to act alone. 
At this time, Tatiana was in a very serious condition and constantly asked about her daughter, how she was feeling, and so on. The guide perfectly understood that the little girl is no longer in this world, but so far to say it openly, could not, so he decided to lie about the fact that she just sleeps. As suddenly right behind the back of the guy appears one of the perpetrators of the current tragedy. As you would expect it turned out to be Lucas. The bandit said that he had already missed him, and he was going to visit him again, as soon as he had finished his business in the village. At this time the boy was in tears, and when he saw what he had in his hands, he was completely speechless, because such a thing would not even wish for an enemy. In response, Lucas said that these guys jumped on him so he had nothing else to do but start defending himself. In the end, he got so carried away that he got this. Sean didn't waste a minute and immediately drew his sword and tried to attack, but unfortunately he was unsuccessful, his opponent easily dodged. Such anger our hero had never felt in his life, he was ready to give everything right now, just to take revenge on this man for what he had done to ordinary peaceful people and students. Then Lucas reminded him that he had promised that he would do something bad, and he would not tolerate the refusal to take Milana for training. Also in the process of the duel to him came to the full realization that in fact Sean did not hide his spiritual power, and she simply does not have it. That's why our hero put all his efforts into perfecting his sword, to the highest level possible. Lucas was so funny about this situation because he couldn't understand how such powerful parents could have a child without spiritual roots. Of course, in some ways this type of person was right. Our hero really doesn't have spiritual energy and can't use cultivation techniques. But his sword is a completely different story, and no matter how strong an opponent Sean has, he is not going to back down under any circumstances. Even if this fight may be his last, the guy will fight to the very end and in the process not even allow the thought that he may lose. This time our hero was insanely lucky, because the opponent did not evaluate him objectively, relaxed too soon, and thought that victory was already in his pocket. So using his phenomenal speed, Sean was able to destroy him before he used cultivation techniques. But unfortunately the adventure did not end there. Tyler suddenly appeared behind the guy, and even though our hero again used his moving technique, the rival with the help of a dream still managed to hurt him pretty badly. The main problem was that now Tyler understands perfectly well that one should not behave frivolously and underestimate the guy, because despite the lack of spiritual energy in him, he is much more dangerous than any ordinary practitioner who is at the stage of development. Frankly speaking, the situation is most deplorable, because right now our hero needs to stop bleeding and equalize his breathing, only under these conditions, he will have any chance of victory. But given how difficult it is to do this is almost impossible. When suddenly Milana appears on the horizon, she knew that these guys were badasses, but she had no idea that they were so badass. Thanks to her magic, she was able to block the opponent's blow, and even counterattack with a skill called wind control. As soon as she had a moment to spare, Milana ran straight to the chief and suggested that he start the treatment process right away, but he replied that it couldn't be started because the rest of the Wuji sect were probably on their way here. But even so, the girl still asked him not to worry, because if you don't start the treatment process right now, then the guy will definitely not be able to survive. Just as our hero was about to agree, some sharp object hits the girl in the back and goes through her through and through. As it turns out, Tyler was a member of the Demon Alliance, which means that destroying his body is not the same as winning, but now the logical question becomes, since when did such a powerful Demon Alliance serve the Wuji sector? Don't tell me that the battle between good and evil ten years ago ended differently. Eventually Tyler showed his full nature, grabbed the guy by the throat and lifted him up. Of course in such conditions our hero couldn't keep Milana near him anymore so he had to throw her to the ground, to somehow convince his rivals to do what they were going to do. Sean decided to remind them that today the guys were seen representing a female sect, and when it all comes out, they will be the first ones to be suspected. But unfortunately, they can't be intimidated by this kind of threats, because if they wanted to, 
they could take over any sex in a matter of minutes and leave no trace of it. Meanwhile, even, Lucas has already managed to rise to his feet and can be said to fully recover, because he as well as his comrade is a member of the demonic alliance. By the way, the process of capturing the sex, those who survived are always given the choice to join the alliance, or forfeit their lives. But this guy won't even be offered that. Well, when there was nothing more to discuss, the guys thought it was time to say goodbye to Sean, and as an additional prey, to take Milano with them. Since she is still alive she can be cured with the help of the golden pill, the main thing is to do everything as intelligently as possible. At this time the guy was hanging in the air, and realized that he should in no way allow Milana to become one of them, he just had to prevent them, or at best destroy every last one of them. Even though it was such a difficult situation, he just refused to believe that it was over. But unfortunately, instead of destroying all of them, our hero's eyes gradually began to darken, exactly until he woke up in a completely unknown place. The first thing Sean thought that he was alive, and is somewhere in the territory of the enemy sect, but then realized that they had no sense to give him life. Then the guy noticed that this place is so majestic and beautiful, so he immediately wondered what this place was, and who saved him, and so also restored his left hand, but a little bit special. Instead of fingers now our hero will have tentacles, at first glance looks pretty ugly, but let's hope that at least more comfortable. A little later some disgusting feeling appeared, the guy lost the ability to move, his whole body froze, sometimes it seemed that even his heart gradually stopped beating. Then some huge blue silhouette appeared in front of him, it started to appear. And to say that Sean could decide for himself what he would be for him, a god or a demon. The thing is that the current knowledge of the guy will not allow him to fully understand this blue creature, so if he wants to, he can just call him an ark and listen to what he will be told. In response to this, the guy said that he would be able to figure out quite easily whether it was a demon in front of him or God. In that case, the blue man didn't mind that he was trying to guess, and immediately after that he began to exert a strong pressure, from which Sean began to feel as bad as possible, and begged him to stop it. In general, right now before the eyes of our hero, countless records of the many wars that were organized by the aliens when they invaded the New Lands. Currently, the world of Sean again subjected to an alien invasion, and the saddest thing about this situation, that with the current level of strength of the inhabitants and defeat will not work. Without the Ark's participation in this battle, the people will be exterminated. I mean, the creature's pretty much saying that the Wuji sect isn't just a bunch of demonic practitioners, but something much more serious. To get to the point, Ark stated that Sean was the one chosen to fix everything but to become the owner of the Ark's power he must obey the Ten Commandments. First and most importantly never betray. If a guy really wants to get the power that doesn't belong to him, he has to give his soul for it and become an eternal prisoner of the Ark. In the process of reciting all the commandment studies, the guy started laughing, to put it mildly. Of course, this insolent behavior did not please anyone at all, and Ark reminded Sean that he had already been deprived of life and by chance he had just had an opportunity to be reborn, which may not be. In response to all this aggression, the guy asked just one logical question, why since Ark is so great and powerful, he can't intervene directly on his own, instead of trying to use a man who almost lost his life. At the very least it looks as illogical as possible. Against this background, the guy was already almost 100% sure that the Great Ark is not able to get to the Divine Continent on its own, and that's why they are specifically looking for some powerful good warrior who can do all the dirty work for them with the help of their power. In the end, instead of finally recognizing their weakness in this regard, Ark started talking about the fact that Sean's life means absolutely nothing to them, and if they want to, they themselves at any moment can make that final life, and will look for another candidate. But the problem is, there's no guarantee they can find a genius like this guy. Realizing this Sean started to demand to be treated with dignity, without any restrictions in the form of the Ten Commandments. So if Ark really wants to cooperate, he just has to control his pride. Because Sean had already shown enough respect while looking down at the Ark. 
When finally our hero was able to insist on his own, the blue creature finally calmed down and asked the guy whether he should be called brave or stupid. Then the eye of truth appeared in front of the guy. According to him such a strong courage and charisma madly touched Ark, so from now on he will be the mediator between the Shan and Arkansas. By the way, his name is Vitaly. And now we can conclude the contract on quite pleasant terms. From that moment the environment became much more favorable. The guy really began to feel like the chosen one, not some slave who was forcibly called here, forced to study the commandments, give his soul, and only then get the power to do what he may not even want to do. As suddenly Sean began to feel not very well, he felt a strong pressure drop, and because of this from his mouth began to bleed. But this is nothing terrible, because Vitaly specially gave a taste of power to our hero, in the body of an ordinary man, so that he realized that it is simply impossible to withstand it. On the one hand it's funny, but on the other hand the guy was really scared, because he thought that right now for the second time in his life he would lose it early. In any case, the guy didn't care who was standing in front of him, because if he had an opportunity to get back to life, he would grab it with both hands. When they started talking about the contract again, Sean started asking some interesting questions out loud, like, what would happen to him if he jumped into the abyss right now? When the tally heard this, he immediately asked him to stop and said that they could discuss the contract. In case Sean thinks that the commandments are too strict, he can observe not all of them. But Vitaly must honestly warn that of these ten there are three of the most important, and if the guy breaks even one of them, then with a hundred percent probability, again lose his life without the possibility of revival. It was actually quite easy to do so, because just by looking at the commandments, Sean realized that everything had its price, and he also realized that even though he had lost his life, Milana was still waiting for him. At least for her sake alone, our hero is willing to pay any price. And as soon as possible to sign this contract, to return back to his world, and slowly begin to restore order there. Before everything starts, Vitaly warned that the process may be unbearably painful, but it's worth it. In this respect Ark really did not lie, because the guy began to feel as his head splits into two parts, and instead of tentacles began to appear a new hand, only unusual and mechanical, what will be the benefits of it is still unknown, but it looks really impressive. To be honest, when Sean saw what had happened, he was shocked, to say the least. The tally said that all this was done to prove the existence of the old gods, so that the guy could fully realize their existence, but this process did not last long. Because of the intense pain, the guy just began to not withstand, and literally tear his clothes to distract himself and for a moment did not think about the fact that he was in pain. All the signs that combined the arc gradually began to draw on the body of the guy to transfer its power to him. When everything was over, Sean with a smile on his face stated that, the arc has a really unusual way of taking to itself, the visions in his head appeared as real as possible, as if the guy really found himself in other worlds, and could even feel them. Then the floor beneath him collapsed and he flew downwards. He reminded him that he must never break the three cardinal commandments, because if he did, it would be as bad as possible, both for Sean and for the world.